So team, welcome to the day two for these software testing tutorials. Uh, hope you all are doing good and you can hear me fine. So right now we have a session that is going on live, but it is the same session that is a continuation for day two. Now, I know a lot of you have joined this as the first demo session and uh, have probably not seen uh, the video that I've requested each of you to see which is the day one video, all right? Uh, not to worry, all you have to do is go back to itelearn.com and you will find the day one video out there, all right? There is uh, no, uh, it's a small session, about 25 minutes, and the first 10 minutes or so is all spent about the training overall and so on, okay? So if you, when you go and visit itelearn.com, you would see the chapter one, QA chapter one, software testing fundamentals. All right. As you see at this point, we have only video one out here. And this is the session that has been done a few weeks back. It was not a live session. This was just a session that got recorded independently. Okay. And I will give you a quick overview of the session. So do not worry about it. But please do watch this video before you get to the second session, which is the one we are in right now. Okay. Now, uh, the essence of what we're going to do today is this. I will give a quick recap of what we did in day one. Okay. That is uh, the session before this. And then I will talk about how we're going to go about enhancing what we have done in terms of test cases, test data, and so on. Some of the naming conventions and executing the tests. At the end, I will talk about interview questions and few practice exercise for things that we have done in the first couple of days. Okay. Since this is a live webinar, we have a, a very large audience present in this live environment using go to training correct all of you have been muted okay if you have any issues with the audio please ensure that you use mic and speakers or you can also dial in through your telephone all right so at this point team i'm going to take a quick second and see if you're comfortable uh, if anyone has an issue please put it on the chat or we will continue from there on All right, team, so let's move forward. If you have questions, please do not raise your hand in the go-to training session. Rather, you should put your question in the chat. I will come to chat messages slowly as we go through the session, not right away. All right. Now, let's look at what we really did in day one. This was a few weeks back, but if you watched the video, it would have been a, a new recap. Okay. I gave a kind of a scenario to you. A situation in which you have taken up a position as a QA engineer or a junior QA engineer or a QA trainee in one of the projects and let's say for example of our exercise we are taking pinterest.com as the application okay let's say that you are going to be part of a testing team that is working for pinterest.com or a similar application why are we doing this? So that you get an exposure to a very practical way of working as a software test engineer. And this way you're building the expertise. Theoretical knowledge is not that critical as you are involved and see actually how people are doing it. That is the essence of what I want to give in this. Okay. So I gave that background to you and I said, what is your primary role and responsibility what is it that you're trying to do and so on uh, where are we in terms of how do we take our steps towards software testing okay you are an absolute beginner so what do you do how do you go about and so on one thing that i emphasized in day one is that the whole aspect is to try and ensure that pinterest.com is working the way it is supposed to be working which is basically the functionality of the application, right? And that it 
is not causing any issues to the users of it. And that is one of your prime responsibilities that everyone is able to easily work with it. There is nothing wrong happening with the application and so on. Okay. Now, as part of that, there is a very fundamentally important um, aspect of how we go about doing it. And that is called your process. Okay. If you see it, I mentioned it three times in here. The reason process is very important is because you will perform it in a specific manner, everything that you do. All right. So unless you follow a process or a structure to it, we will not be a successful software test engineer. All right. That is very, very important thing. Now, as part of this process, here are the four steps that we have put down. Very important. So let's do a revisit of them. We, one, want to understand the application as to what is it that it is doing. Okay. Understand the scope of our activity. What is it that we are supposed to be doing as part of our roles and responsibilities? Okay. How do we go about documenting everything that we see? And how do we communicate it to others? Okay. So this is the one which we created as part of the day one. And then we said, hey, you know what, let's start working on uh, creating some uh, scenarios that we want to test. What is a scenario? It is a specific end-to-end -end, uh, representation of a process. Okay. Anything general. Okay. Let's say we talk about uh, Facebook. Okay. One of the significant scenarios in Facebook is you go in and you like uh, a page or you like a post and so on. Okay. So the whole process of you logging in, uh, seeing the post or the page that you like, and um, and then you put a like on it and seeing that um, it has happened, that whole process is a scenario. Okay, We will come to the definitions after we practically experience it. That way it is very easy for each of us. All right. Now, one of the scenarios or one of the uh, aspects or functionality of the application that we wanted to test was the feature called as categories okay so do not worry on this sheet right now we will come back to the sheet but i wanted you to look at the categories portion categories is basically saying that so again uh, let's recap in terms of our knowledge of the application this is an application where users across the world are putting using this application as a pin board. What is a pin board? You take a small post-it or you take a small uh, piece of paper, put some information in it and stick it into your board where not only you are seeing but everyone around you is seeing. So if you have a small board at home, then you're putting reminders or when you're supposed to pay your bills or some important events coming up for your kids and all this on this pin board, right? If it's in a school or a university, you would see a lot to do with your course and other extracurricular things that are being put in there. So this is an online pin board. So depending on your area of interest, you could look at what others are doing. Okay, What others are putting this and saying, hey, you know what, this is what I like. So it's got a social plugin also to it. I am not going deep into explaining it, but let's say that we are still very, very new into it. But the interest level is trying to test into specific, specific areas. And this time we're focusing on something called as categories. Okay. Now, if I give you this application and say test it, all right, and that is all I say. Okay. If I say that you've got 30 minutes, test it. Don't ask me a single question. Then what will you do? So even if I say don't ask me a single question, someone will first raise their hand and say, hey, you know what, what do I test? Where is the functionality? But what is expected? What is not expected? How do I know this is correct? How do I know this is wrong? Right? So that is where you document everything. All right? You document everything and then you communicate it to others that this is what you're doing. That way, if there is an issue in what we're doing, we are able to identify it before we put a lot of hard work into it. Okay? Now, let's get into day, day two team. So I'm going to save this before I start making changes and call it as day two. All right. 
in this day two, let's focus on this testing process. I created some dummy uh, uh, test cases or scenarios in here. Okay. I want to focus on something called as a test scenario. Okay. Uh, now, but to build a scenario, let's talk about something basic things called as test cases. Team. Okay. As a test engineer, one of the primary building blocks for what we do is built around our concept of a test case and how comfortable we are working around these test cases. Okay. So I'm going to call this as test cases. Now, what really are test cases? I do not want a definition team and I try and I tell you why definitions are a little dangerous. Number one, it shows a very theoretical skill. Two, it shows that you're not creative where you're putting your actual expertise into defining what something is. Okay. And you are not really explaining things the way you believe it. And that's why it becomes very standard. But definitions are good because they have a single meaning. There's no comp uh, confusion in terms of what each supposed to mean. Okay. Now, to build test scenarios, let's go through a basic structure called as test cases. Test cases are very simple, readable, uh, doable blocks of things. Very easy for us to understand. What are these test cases? Let me erase this uh, picture and draw a new one. Test case, look at it like a block. Okay. Now, every test case is about doing a few things. Okay. It's about executing some steps and expecting to see something as an output due to this. All right. So you perform a specific action or a series of actions or steps and depending on what you do, you get a specific output. Okay. For example, I will say that one of the test cases is that when I go to categories and I click on, let's say, education, I expect to see uh, this specific image on the top. All right. So if I'm saying that, hey, this is what I expect to see on the top, then that is a test case. Now, what are those steps that I built about it? One is go to Pinterest.com. Second, get your mouse over categories. Third, click on education. Fourth, verify that this image is there. Fifth, report it. That is your test case. All right. So let me first delete what I have here and start writing on it again. Now, we have something called as order. Order is basically in which order do we want to execute something or we want to go about executing the process. We will not worry about an order because order can keep changing. But I want to use something which is uniquely identifying what I am doing. Okay. And that I'll call it as test case ID. All right. So test case ID, ID or identification, or we can also keep it as TC ID is something that is uniquely telling me that, Hey, you know what? This is this test case. So I can do something like, you know, 1001. Oh, sorry. This is 10,001. In fact. And the next one I can say is 10,002. And the next one I can say is 10,003 and so on. Okay. Let's say that this is my naming convention right now. Let me create a few more and go about it. So if I have decided as part of what I do as a junior test engineer that this is the names I'll give, I will follow it. Now, what was my test case? Verify that. Uh, 50 readerizers. Look at these terms people come up with these tests, right? Interesting, this all basically merged uh, and evolved terms. Verify that readerizers appears on the education theme of Pinterest.com as the first post. That is what is the test case overall. Now, is this not easy for someone to uh, uh, execute it, right? Why do I need to write steps against it? It is important. Why is it important? Because 
unless you write specific steps, if tomorrow something changes in the application and people are not able to replicate those steps, then they know that, hey, this is not an error. The steps have changed. We need to update those steps. Like let's say categories has moved somewhere else in the page. Okay. Now, what are the steps for this? Step number one is one. Go to, uh, what is this? Pinterest.com. Right. Very important to this. Are. Our thought process of thinking through how we do things and documenting them is very, very critical. That is what will make you successful. Okay. Go to Pinterest.com. So I am trying to replicate that as I perform this. Go to Pinterest.com. Then move mouse over education okay three uh sorry move mouse over is this education team that i need to move the mouse over you can freely use the chat because i can see your messages uh, and you can post it okay move mouse over categories not education click on education and for visit the education section all right now what to expect i ex expect 50 reader rises as the first post in this section now this is what i created all right now look at what we have done a result will come when we execute it right now there is no execution we're just creating test cases so we don't have to worry verify that readerizers appear on the education team of pinterest.com as the first post okay now the what we have done in this case is one uh, specific test case like that now if i create another test case how about this if i go into technology all right. I want to test the same thing for technology. Now, in this case, I want to see that CNET 5 best beta wireless routers is expected. So the easiest way for me to do this is to, number one, go here, copy this whole thing, put it here, right? Since it's the same thing, almost exactly the same thing, and say that this is the what I expect to see. Since so 50 rerises here, CNET as the first post in this section. So uh, this is what we are seeing right now. And I'm saying that verify that not readerizes this one. This is the name of the test case. Go to Pinterest.com, move mouse or category, click on technology. Okay. Visit the technology section. Right. How do I really know that I am in the technology section within Pinterest? Does it show this anywhere else on the page that I can look at? There is a scroll to top. Then where else can I see that there is a technology in here? Because I want to be smart about it. How do I know that this is all technology? There is no way that I am saying that this is technology at the moment, right? So there should be some other way. If I go to categories, do I see that highlighted in any cases? No, it is the same. Exactly, there's something appear in the URL. Why don't we put that additional check here? And I'll say, this is verification number one. Verification number two is URL will be this. Okay, in the same manner, I'm going to put this and say, URL will be something different. See, we are showing what is expected. Now, team, we'll go back and let's note again. There is currently no documentation. There are no requirements or there is no functional specification or functional documentation, blah, 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 blah. And please get used to it. 95% of cases, you may not find it also. Okay. What does that mean? That you are going to actually create a lot of it. You may jump into applications that are already built. Okay, 95% may be an exaggeration, but I'm saying that expected. 
that you don't have any support in terms of documentation. Okay. Yes, you're right. See, now as part of my own creation, if I make mistake, like here, if I leave technology, right, if I go about testing it, then it is an issue. Now, this is not going to be technology for the first time. It is supposed to be education. Will it show me education here? Right? So I'll put education in here. All right. Now, this test case and this test case, what are they? Are they very similar? Do you see if these two test cases are very similar? No, yes, kind of, yep. Okay, so let's see what is the similarity and what is not similar in them. Okay, just two right now. So if I put this into a block and look at it, then what is similar, what is not similar? Is step one similar? Yes. Is step two similar? Yes. Is step three similar? No. Okay. Is step four similar? No. Actually, let's talk about same and similar. Same and similar, you know the difference, right? Um, I don't know theoretically, I mean, can't give it definition wise. Same is an exact replica. There's no difference in it. Similar is somewhat like that, but not exactly the same. That is the difference, right? Somewhat close to it. So one is the same step. Two is the same step. I'm talking about here. Go to Pinterest.com, same. This is same. Click on something is here. Click on something else is here. So that's similar actually. Visit the something is here. Visit the something is here. So they're similar again. So if you look at this, the test steps are similar. And also what to expect are kind of similar, right? Because you are expecting a URL, you are expecting a post to be there. Now, this is where you come to saying and differentiating what you keep in a test case and what you take out into a test data. Okay, all right. That is how you can easily try and put a lot together into the same set of execution. Okay, now, I am not showing a strat, a very, um, what do you call that, standard way of defining these things, okay. We will uh, go about creating templates and form them to make something standard eventually. Now, I will include a new uh, she, uh, sorry, column into this and I'm going to call this as test data. Sorry, one second. My sheet is a little big. If I could minimize it, but the fonts will become too small. So let me not do that. Uh, keep it 100. Okay. So here I'll say test data. Now, why am I saying test data? I want to keep everything same and move only certain thing into test data. Click this is, I'll say is A, B, C. Visit the education section. This I'll say is X, Y, Z. Okay, or why not more sim simple category one, category one. Okay, and here is the same thing. URL is also category equals category one. Okay, that is the thing that is changing. Okay, read rises best wireless orders blah blah blah. Okay. No, actually it's not this. As the first post in the section here, I will say this is also part of category one. Post one. Now, do you see what we are saying? Now, what I'm going to do is this. I am going to create a new sheet. Why should I create a new sheet? If I see my one sheet is getting complex, right? If what I already have is getting complex, it is better to try and put information here and then see if we want to move it. Okay. So I will put different categories. What are these categories? these out here in here and what I expect as the first post on that out there okay now look at it so I'll say this is category name fair enough and I will say the other one is uh, category name 
what is it first post or first pin let's say let's call this as pins okay now by the time we finish this and by the time we get into a little later itself you'll see everything is changing on the application that is fine that will give us more flexibility to play things around okay so now i've created two new columns let me quickly create this and tell you why this is, becomes very important for us. Now, I can put education in here and say, as part of education, I expect to see, um, where is that? Will this come up for us? Is this education? Gone. The reader is, this is already gone long back somewhere. I think so. Yep. That's fine. See, it keeps changing so if i say this then we'll see what will happen shape sorting is what i expect and then what is the second one technology so as part of technology what do i expect to see i would love this below All right so what we have done is this team we are taking the data <coughs> out of the test case and putting it separately and I'm saying it is in a separate Excel. Okay, so if I keep everything like this, I can now delete this. I don't need this anymore and say repeat for different sets of test data. Now let's name this as test data and I am going to say that this is each of the row of this is a test data set and this becomes very important for you in a lot of cases. Now when I went into automation, I never focused to that extent about it. So this also I'll say 1001, 1002, 1003 and so on. Okay. Education, shape sorting. Okay. Technology, I would love this below. And let's say that I go into art and I put this as Bob Dylan by Richard Ab, whatever. Okay. Art. Is it art or is it arts? Okay. Hey, how about the URL? Didn't we forget it? Easy. Let's put this here and I'll say URL. And for this, this is the URL. For this, uh, is, uh, technology. This is the URL. For category education, this is the URL. Now, I have created just a sample of three sets of test data. Okay, I have created a sample of three sets of test data. Now, I can go, this is actually no longer a testing process. Initially, we started creating this as testing process. This is actually test cases. Okay, verify the URL and the first post of, uh, verify for each category each category of Pinterest.com that is what we're doing go to Pinterest.com move mouse over categories click on category um, based category one from test data okay visit category one visit cat uh, let's just say cat cat one post one or pin one this is right Verify first pin is from the test data. URL will be whatever this is, category cat. Right? Now, I have returned the English portion of it in saying that uh, test data is somewhere in here. Right? So now, I should specifically be more precise about so now I'll say, let's execute this for 1000, 10,001, 10,002, 10,003. But hey, isn't these names confusing with what we have out here already? Correct? Is it not confusing? Yes, it is. 
and hence let's have a naming convention that is better and we're going to call this as TC001, TC002, TC003 and so on. That way I am saying that the, some things are test cases, some things are test steps and so on. That way we can easily identify what we are working with. So this I can call it as TD001, TD003. Now, please note this team. It is not about you trying to uh, write down whatever I say and so on. No, you are actually going to practice on what I'm showing you and you're going to actually start filling up this Excel and proceed from there on. Very, very important piece. Okay, because now after we do this, I'm actually going to be going to do an execution of it after we write a couple of more test cases. You help me writing another couple of test cases, we will go about doing the execution for it. Right? Control C, test data one. Now here, let's change it accordingly. I have test data here. I'm going to call this as TD001, TD002, TD003. Now, any questions so far, please, what we have done? I'm actually proceeding in a very gradual and slow manner so that you are able to pause this video, uh, able to uh, inter interact with uh, what I'm doing and perform the same on the application and repeat this at your end, please. All right. Now, look at it this way, team. I have shown you what are test cases. What is testing cases? Wrong word. Test cases. And I showed you what is test data. Okay. So, I can take one test case and repeat it for different sets of test data okay and see how it works out and how the application behaves with it okay why am i not writing a test plan before this yes i did the background the r and r the software testing all this is my high level test plan not a detailed one when we get to the second project using either uh, Bugzilla or Jira, we will get into a different thing. But I want you to see how we evolve to get there, okay? Why we need test cases, why we need test data, all of these things, all right? Now, you have created a test case, you have put what is expected, and you said, what are the set test data that you want to execute it for, okay? We'll come to the result later. Now, let's do one more, okay? I am going to create another test case. Team, help me with identifying another test case, please. How about everything or popular or gifts? Login, I actually want to keep it for you. Or how about change language? Actually, this is going to be tricky, but we should try. Uh, it is actually not doing much, but how do you know? I would not touch language right now because I don't even know how to come back to it. But again, localization, the language based testing is again very big thing, which we should remind me, we should definitely look at something on that front later, please. Okay. Now, uh, login is something I want to do, but okay, let's talk about popular or let's talk about gifts. Why not gifts? There's something very standard with gifts, correct? So how about saying that uh, verify gifts? Or let's see, um, something in gifts. Uh, okay, verify that gifts are in the specific category or bands. How about that like? Verify that the pins from gifts fall under specific category of price. Uh, or not category, range of price selected. You see what I'm saying? This is going to be a very interesting thing. Why? Because if I say gifts 20 to 50, for example, anything I take randomly, any post that I take should have a value that is in that range only. The URL is different. Now, help me with the test steps for it. Please. One is go to pinterest.com okay then move mouse over gifts right click on 
uh, range of gift yes visit the pins from that range now this is what we will perform okay what to expect one url is nice because see url has this format okay if it is not then something is also wrong right this i'll say is low range and price end is high range okay and that is number one correct or number two either way that doesn't matter as long as at the end we are testing everything now this is a project team it is not a tutorial please remember this this is a project that we are doing together we are not doing tutorial alone okay i want you to get involved into doing it, how we go about creating different things now uh, gifts different categories the great thing is we have only a few categories i'm a bad with mouse or is this this way see i go to gifts and by the time i'm coming down slowly if i'm a grandma doing it it is tough right see this is a ui based issues these are all ui based issues this is happening because the gap between these two by the time i'm coming down it's happening okay anyway that was a small diversion but uh, let me uh, put this here uh, verify that is it every post falls under that range of price okay now what is the test data in this case can i take this and this and this and this and this and this no this is a different set of test data that i've been using for something else this is a category name there's a first pin there is a url and so on okay now let's talk about something additional here called gifts see i have two options here the easiest option right now is i'll put gifts here and start adding values into that also and i'll say actually this is uh, uh, see it will become tough for me okay let's say i add a new column into the same set of test data this is actually getting very interesting for us okay if i add a new column in the same set of test data is it possible probably why not let's try 1 to 20 dollars so i'll say this is dollar 1 to 20 okay let's say the next one is 20 to 50 dollars okay this is dollar 20 to 50 and the next category is let's say 50 to 100 dollar 50 to 100 now is this the only set of test uh, uh, data that i require to execute the next test case no why i also need something else is it what else do i require url correct because that is what i'm verifying for i also expect a url to be there here so i take this and put this here and say url and say that this is the url i expect in this case case i'll say 1 to 20 okay and here i'll say this is 50 and this is 21 i guess right 20 to 50 okay and here i'm going to say hundred and this is 50 to 100 now any issues that you think or see so far on this yeah there is an issue i have one url here another url here which url am i going to use for what correct and if i say that this is a gift then that's a problem right for gifts, I'll use this URL. For categories, I'll use this URL. So what is it meaning that the data that I use to test is dependent on the, the uh, test case itself? Okay. The application can have huge sets of test cases. But unless I club test cases 
under a specific uh, section or a specific module, I will have tough time with the test data also. All right. And that is why it is important that you club your test data, your test uh, cases, everything under different modules. Okay. And hence, these are used for module one. And let's call them as categories. Okay. That is one module T. Now we are coming to breaking down the entire application into modules. The other one, let's call it as gifts. Okay. We are going to call this as gifts, the other one. The third one, as you will expand as part of your exercises, you can call it as login or members or something like that. All right. Depending on the category we are, our test cases are different and our test data will also be different. And that is how we have to store them in that fashion. Okay. So now let's do it that way. Okay. So I'm going to uh, save this, but put start with test cases and say that insert a category or a module in here and say what module does this belong to? This belongs to my module called category. Okay. Is this under category team? No, this is under gifts. Do I have only one test case under category? Right now I have only one test case under category. Yes. But tomorrow I can have uh, hundreds of test cases created under category. It is different combinations or variations of it. Now, how do I know test case 001 is belonging to a category, a specific category? Sorry, a specific module. Easy way is, let's say that we uh, describe it this way. I'll say CAT, the first three characters I will use from the module. CAT underscore TC001. Okay. Here, I'll say G GIF underscore TC002 or TC001. Team, am I confusing anyone or are you all with me? Now I'm saying the way we uh, name, that naming convention, this specific section that I'm talking about, that we put as a standard is something that we are evolving, we are developing. We started with something very basic. We felt that, hey, we are having issues with it. So we're changing. Now, if I create a new test case in this category, okay, I can call it as TC002. Okay, blah, blah, blah. This we have not yet come. Like whatever we do, we can change this later, correct? Now, what I could do is I could create my test data also for different sets of categories, okay? So I can say that, hey, this is cat underscore td001. Uh, cat underscore td002. Cat underscore td003. Okay, now if I put a new column here and say which category it belongs, there is a small problem. The small problem is that sometimes there are values that are common, sometimes there are values that are different. That is fine. I will say insert and call this as module and what module does it belong to. I know for sure this belongs to category because that is how I am naming it. Now for gifts, I will change it. This is TD001. Okay. This I am going to call this for gifts. Now, is there a category name? Is it important for gifts? No, this is not important for me, right? This is correct. It's actually range. This is not gifts, okay? Range or even better, gift range, okay? So, in this case, I will move this gift range below here, okay? And this URLs in here, okay? Now, let me quickly put this in, then I'll be able to quickly explain uh, and walk you through it. I don't need two URL columns, one URL column is enough. Right? This is our preparation of testing. Okay, Then we will come to the actual testing itself. This is based on what skill and knowledge we have right now. Right? It is rather a three. Gifts, gifts, gifts. Okay. Now, 
look at it. I have one category of tests. Okay. Uh, sorry. Now, since there is a word category being used somewhere else, I should not use it. I have one module of test data. And in this module, I don't require a gift range as a field. Okay. So, I leave it blank. That is fine. In the other module for gifts, I don't require a category name, the first pin or so on, but I require a URL, but I require a gift range. Okay. This is different. Correct. Now, depending on what test case I want to execute. All right. Let's give this a better color. I think that's okay. For now. But at least make it correct sized. Okay. Depending on what category I'm, what module I'm executing, I should be able to point to that specific set of test data. So let's say that this is my category. So I'm going to go to Notepad. These are the three test data that I will use to test this one. Oops. Okay. For the second test case, which is the first test case under gifts, I will then say that, hey, you know what, not this. Let's take these three sets of data and test it. So team, if there are any questions, you can please let me know once I've completed this. I'm just slowly developing team, developing what we're supposed to be doing. The more issues and challenges we face doing it, that is how we can easily come to learning new things as part of it. All right. Uh, gifts, TD001, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, see how we've developed slowly into these two. There's nothing in this. Let me not put anything. So, I have created one test case and I said, hey, test it against three different sets of data. I have created another test case and I said, hey, test it against three different sets of data. Or why not four different sets of data? Sure. Let's go. Uh, and one more here, name it as TD004, okay. Uh, what is the range in this case? 100 to 200. So I'm going to call this as 100 to 200. That's the range, okay. Data also changed. Go back here and call this as GIF underscore TD004. Now what we have done team is we have created some basic modules or uh, and some a simple test scenario for each of those modules. Now if you go about doing it then we will say hey we, how many modules are there in this? Right Nalini there is a specific reason I have done that I will come to it. Okay. So I will create a new sheet in here and call this as my modules. Okay, application modules, application modules. Now here I will use this to list different types of modules. Module name, uh, description. Okay, as we fill different modules, we will fill the diff descriptions, gifts, login out here. So. I'm leaving the description right now. We could fill this later. Right? But I've created a new one. Now, do I need this R and R background? Keep it. Okay. So it doesn't hurt for us to have all of them in one place. Okay. Now modules is created, description for that. There is a test data. There are test cases assigned to each module. Good. Now, any questions before I move forward into the next uh, process of trying to test? Let me see. So many messages. I know there are over 90 people in this audience right now. So I want to make sure that I have everyone with it. But primarily, remember this team, that the reason I'm trying to do this is with interactions, I get a lot of new things. But the whole intent is to take them and put them as video sessions. And most of you who are watching it are watching it as a video itself right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, Birju, you said you didn't understand why you created another Excel sheet. Okay, so I've created Excel sheet after Excel sheet because as we go along, you will realize that we will create a lot of content within our whole testing process. Okay, 
that is important so you will know that we will continue to create test uh, new excel sheets to uh, make better sense of what we're trying to do so i think that is done also on this call dina on like category name first bit. okay what are the different bit? test cases and test data okay so what is the difference between test cases and test data so <coughs> test cases is basically what you want to do okay test data is what is the inputs that will change what you expect about what you want to do it's very simple is this okay let's say driving a car is your test case okay you want to turn your car to the left is your test case okay now what is the test data is the angle at which you're turning your steering wheel and the speed at which you are and the road conditions depending on that you will see how much turn you make correct so this speed angle of your turn and the road conditions are the test data okay you change the test data your test case it will still turn the car okay that is the test case but the output of it will change right is that making sense will it be possible to export these test cases in excel to quality center i am not touching quality center not a big fan of it myself only uh, but you can take it in specific formats and import this excel into various uh, test management systems is it not click on category okay login uh, no i don't think we are trying to click on any of them it's just mouse over right uh, it's a drop down menu. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's do. I'm actually going to come from here. Uh, how would you record result if a particular test data set fails? Correct, exactly. Now it gets interesting. How do I record? Because when I'm executing this, I may see that, hey, you know what? For each time I'm executing it, I make, uh, depending on the data, my result can change. How do we record it? So we will come to that uh, when we get into that. In fact, I think it's going to be next session. The execution of it itself can you give example of test case 2 for gift category or gift test case 2 for category or gift uh, mark what was the question mark uh, difference between test case and test uh, scenario okay test case test scenario we will come to test scenario a little later right now i'm talking about the test case most of the times it is the same thing okay it is exactly the same thing all right there's no difference between a test case and test scenarios. However, uh, the general thing is that test scenario has more than one test case into it. And when we go to use cases, when we go to what use cases and what test scenarios are out of a use cases and so on, it will become even more easier. Okay. By definition, by why is nothing significantly different? Okay. Larger set of test cases combined together more strategic beginning and ending they become a test scenario what would be recorded if a particular test data set fails we're coming to that okay different between that and that i'm just reading the comments on the chat okay yeah so i made a few mistakes of my own why all data in one sheet with many modules that would be wide sheet exactly you're right perfect as we go about you will see that this test data we will keep on adding different columns to it and it is uncontrollable okay in an excel based format this is very challenging okay but right now it looks okay when we go about into a little bit more complexity of it you will see that hey how does different versions of this testing world evolve why are people doing it this way not this way but this is the building blocks for us of how we go about and being a test engineers okay now when we come back tomorrow, we will actually get into testing these uh, sets of test data and seeing what we did correct, what we did wrong, how do we handle different situations as they come to us and so on. Okay. As an exercise, can you create a couple of uh, test cases for login, create some test data for login and try and replicate what we have done here. Okay. So what we are doing and so on. Now, uh, I have put a few questions here in terms of interview questions, okay, and the exercise. Let me give you an idea of exercise and then we'll end with this interview question thing, okay. Exercise is I want you to write new test cases for login functionality, create sample test data for the login functionality, 
we will execute this test cases and how do we go about capturing and reporting the results this is still pending so do not come to this we will come to this later okay but at a high level these are some of the interview questions now i will put a text version of this also on the website so that you don't have to i don't have to read through each of them and we will try and give different answers to very basic what do you typically see uh, being asked in different types of interviews we will try and keep this format for every class so there is more uh, information coming overall to it for you okay while i have the screen any last few questions that i can take please let's see uh, okay okay uh, when do we get video of the session okay uh, it will take few hours for me to convert and upload please visit the blog um, not the blog the website itlearn.com you should see it there how do we test dynamic pages when pins are changing correct now you will see that what we have done seem to be logical but pins will keep changing what will happen then what would another care of category module case of category this test case is of similar nature mark i still didn't get a question but i will definitely take up your question if you put it more uh, explicitly for me please test steps yes is step by step process um, uh, test scenario saying Yes, we will cover test strategy, uh, test planning, um, effort estimations, a um, lot of these things at length, but we will go through it uh, gradually. How do we do the exercise? Like I've done, create a simple Excel and go about doing it, please. Login, we'll discuss tomorrow. Will you be taking on an e-commerce site that include complex credit card processing? Um, there's nothing called complex credit card processing, all that, okay? There's an e-commerce and there's a part of it is uh, the shopping cart and so on so let's see if we can pick up an application where we can do we can probably do something out here itself i don't know all right we could probably look at that too uh, let's see does pooling of all test cases form a test data nope it doesn't another example of test case for category module oh another example for test case for category module sure but do we have time today for that i don't know okay uh, let's say if I go about categories, uh, let's see what else is there. Okay, if I go to a specific category, all right, and we um, let's say if I say comment on it, does a category section show up there? No. If I say like here, does a category section show up here? No. It always asks me to log in. Repin will also make me log in. But if I click on uh, expansion, does it show the category anywhere? Head of a woman. Blah, blah, blah. Four repits. It doesn't show me a category anywhere. Um, from Art Love. Repint three years ago. What is this? Uh, I think I, we should be able to. We play a little bit more around in the application. We should be able to create a few more test cases for sure. I'm talking about dozens of them, not one. All right? uh, but how will they belong to specific categories? We'll have to see because there are so many categories. Even if we pick one of them, we should be able to significantly create a lot of test cases. Even, for example, how many post pins do we see per row? Okay, If I resize the window, how many do we need to see? Okay, If it's a mobile-based size of a browser, then how does it look? So there are different test cases that we could create. We will come to the variations of it. Uh, okay, that was your smart and boundary checks. Yep. So uh, let's not focus on uh, what is part of this course and so on. Let's talk about these topics. Okay, course content, everything has been put specifically on the app website. Please look into that, please. Uh, I think this is good. Who right, test plan test? Okay, team, keep your questions. A lot of questions. I would say use the chat. Let's be a little bit more creative about it. Go to itelearn.com. All right. Go to the post where I'm putting this uh, post. Right, and start putting your uh, questions as part of the comments in here. Okay. If you go to that section where I already have the video one and where video 2 is going to be coming up, why don't you start putting the comments out here? For example, I put a comment earlier today saying that, look forward to meeting you all tomorrow for the live webinar, right? Why don't you reply to this or rather uh, put a new comment and say that, hey, you know what? I have a question and great for us to 
post questions here and keep answering since uh, majority of you are going to be watching this video um, that will make a great sense okay all right team thank you so much we'll see you tomorrow um, and uh, we will take it forward from there okay thank you everyone bye now mm, thanks everyone bye